بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الصادق الأمين وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد Indeed all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator, the sustainer and the regulator of all that happens in the universe and we invoke his peace and blessings upon his noble messenger the truthful, the trustworthy one, his family, his companions, and all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am sure that all of us are well aware that this weekend is probably the most important weekend in uh, most of the Christian world. Uh, of course, Friday will be a holiday, and so all of us will uh, will be out for work. So let's use that time to come to the masjid, not to the church, of course. Uh, what I would like to talk a little bit about is Friday itself. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had prescribed for Bani Israel a day of prayers, if you like, and that was Saturday. However, they did not fulfill their obligations on this day, for they were ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to use this day, as we call it in English, Sabbath, the Sabbath, as a day of rest from work. Rest from work, but at the same time, a day that should be utilized for the worship of Allah, the exalted, the glorified. And of course, as we know from the Quran itself, they came up with brilliant schemes to get around the legislation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding the Sabbath. Allah tells us in Surah Al-Baqarah, in this ayah, is in context of speaking to Bani Israel. Allah says, وَلَقَدْ عَلِمْتُمُ الَّذِينَ اَعْتَدَوْ مِنْكُمْ فِي السَّبْتِ فَقُلْنَا لَهُمْ كُونُوا قِرَدَةً خَاسِئِينَ وَجَعَلْنَا فَجَعَلْنَاهَا نَكَالًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهَا وَمَا خَلْفَهَا وَمَوْعِظَةً لِلْمُتَّقِينَ Allah says surely, and here he is addressing Bani Israel at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, because this is the Qur'an that came down at that time, speaking to Bani Israel and reminding them of many incidents and instances that happened in the past over many years from one prophet to the next prophet who were sent to Bani Israel, the children of Israel. And here Allah reminds them of the specific incident of the Sabbath. وَلَقَدْ عَلِمْتُمُ الَّذِينَ اَعْتَدَوْ مِنْكُمْ فِي الزَّبْدِ And you indeed know very well those who اعتدوا they transgress limits in, in relation to the Sabbath. In other verses in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us more details about the transgression of limits in regards to the Sabbath. And that is, they were informed at that time or ordered at that time to rest on this day, not to engage in work, but to use this day for the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and, and this group of people in particular, they uh, were fishermen. So the, and their livelihood depend on catching fish. So the whole week they would go out and fish. And then on the Sabbath, which was the Saturday, they were supposed to take a break from work and use this time to, to engage in various forms of, of worship. But they realized, as Allah tells us in the Quran, that on the day of the Sabbath, the fish would be all over the ocean or the sea. And after the Sabbath was over, they really uh, caught fish. 
So they came up with a plan to catch the fish, but at the same time they believe not to violate the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is said that they dug trenches when they created the ponds. And then, so on the Sabbath day when the fish were plenty, the fish would come into the ponds and they would block up the trenches now so that the fish couldn't leave. So once the Sabbath was over, they could come now and catch all this fish. But nevertheless, this was a transgression and a violation of the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the one lesson here, of course, that you and I should desist or from ever trying to seek ways and means to get around the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because one thing, brothers and sisters, that we as humans really need to acknowledge and recognize and come to grips with, is that no matter how hard we try, no matter what we do, where we go, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created creations, he intended that His creations will always need Him and depend upon Him. So no matter how great human beings come, become, no matter how great their achievements, we will never be able to be independent of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are people of course today who would laugh at the idea that we, people still believe in God and that God actually regulates matters every day in life and in existence. But these people need to come to grips with that fact and that reality. That no, no matter how much they think and they believe and they feel they have evidence and proof that God does not exist, the reality is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God does exist. And not only that, every creature depends upon Him whether they realize it or not. So it would actually do human beings a lot of good. Instead of fighting to, to free themselves from this contact with God or this relationship with God, which they cannot sever, mind you, it would do them a lot more good to embrace this reality. To realize that in spite of all that we do, in spite of how much we may deviate, in spite of the numbers of people who may deny the existence of God Almighty, and the fact that He controls everything that happens in existence, all of this does not change the reality. And that is, God is the Creator, and He is the Sustainer, and He also controls everything in existence. So we should not seek ways and means to get around what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered. A, a human being will find a lot, a lot more peace and comfort and contentment in life by dedicating his or her life to the service of God Almighty. Which Allah, the exalted, has allowed us, mashaAllah, to pursue our own happiness, our, our own enjoyment, while at the same time we can serve Him. So the amazing thing is, while you and I seek to enjoy our lives, and to be happy as much as we can, and all of us by nature we, we would like to be happy. No one likes to be sad. And that's why we seek to engage in activities and in things that make us happy from which we derive pleasure and happiness. And we make all attempts to avoid things that will bring us sadness and grief. And yet sometimes we can't do that. We can't avoid things that will bring grief and sadness upon us. But it would, all, it would give us all a lot more inner peace and satisfaction to submit to God rather than to rebel against God. Because the person who rebels against a system, and I'm not saying that if the system is bad you shouldn't really uh, protest and whatever else, but what I'm saying is, when we fight to control what we cannot control, 
we will only stress ourselves out. And this is where the Muslim actually finds so much of peace. We find the peace because we resign ourselves, we submit to the fact that God is in control. And that it is His will that will always be established, not ours. We strive to make our will, hopefully, uh, uh, in agreement with the will of Allah, the Creator. So that when what we like and what we want does not occur and does not happen, we submit to the reality that God Almighty is in control of His universe. And He will do whatever He wants in spite of our likes and dislikes. So the children of Israel, they transgressed the limits in the matter of the Sabbath. And although they thought they found a way of obeying God on the one hand, and also uh, ensuring their livelihood, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it clear that that is not acceptable. Because it, it, in a way it showed a lack of confidence and dependency upon God, the exalted. The Almighty. It, it is as if they did not believe that God would provide for them. And then the Christians, of course, chose for themselves uh, a Sunday as their Sabbath or their day of rest and day of, of dedicating themselves to the worship of God. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the Muslims. Friday. Now, what did the Prophet ﷺ say about Friday? This is what I really want to share with you. Since Friday is, is going to be what everybody calls Good Friday, as Muslims we consider every Friday to be a Good Friday. Because of the hadith in Sahih Muslim, in which the Prophet ﷺ informed us that Friday is the best day that the sun has ever come up upon. The best day that the sun has ever risen upon is the day of Jumu'ah, the Friday. What's so special about Friday? The Prophet ﷺ mentions a few things in this hadith in Sahih Muslim. He says, فِيهِ خُلِقَ Adam عَلَيْهِ salam. It was on a Friday that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam. وَفِيهِ أُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ It was on this day that he was admitted in paradise to live. But with certain conditions. And all the conditions were favorable to Adam. Only one was something that he was required not to do. Allah promised him that if you fulfill your end of the bargain, you will live in paradise forever and you will never become thirsty. You will never become thirsty. You will never suffer from the heat of the sun. You know, life would be perfect. The perfect life. You're not too hot, you're not too cold. And you and I living in Canada, mashallah, we, we can understand the, the easy life, the life or the, in, a way, in, in, in a country or in a, in a climate that is neither too hot nor too cold. All of us here during the winter time, and I know today is, is sort of exceptionally cold, although it's still slightly above, above freezing, when we experience such cold uh, uh, weather, we wish for the hot <coughs> days of July, June and July. And yet, when those very days roll around, we would complain of the heat and the oppressive heat. And we seek out the air-conditioned rooms. And we crank up our air conditions, we, we lower the temperature, mashallah. It, we're looking for discomfort. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised Adam alayhi salam all of this. But all he had to do was one thing in return. Don't come near this one tree. So it was on this day that he was also admitted to paradise. In another hadith, not in Sahih Muslim, but Shaykh al-Albani created this hadith as Sahih, the Prophet ﷺ said it was also on this day 
Uhbita. Uhbita. That he was sent out. In fact, in the hadith in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet says, Wafihi ukhrija. It was on this day as well that he was turned out of paradise. In the hadith that is not in Sahih Muslim in Sunan Abi Dawood, which Shaykh al Bani graded as Sahih, the Prophet والسلام, also added, Wafihi tiba alayhi. It was also in the, on this day, on a Friday, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his repentance and his asking for forgiveness. So it was on this day, a Friday, that he was forgiven alayhi salam. And then the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam also said that it would be on this day, a Friday, that the sa'ah, the hour will be established. The hour will be established on a Friday. And then the Prophet says that there is no, and this, this addition is from the hadith in, in Abi Dawood, that is read as Sahih by Shaykh al Albani. The Prophet added, there is no animal on the face of the earth except that it, it wakes up in the, on a Friday morning crying. وَمَا مِن دَابَةٍ عَلَى وَجْهِ الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا وَتُصْبِحُ يَوْمَ الْجُمْعَةِ مُسِيخَةً مُسِيخَةً Crying out, screaming out. شَفَقَةً مِنَ السَّاعَةِ Out of fear of the hour. إِلَّا بْنَ آدَمٍ Except human beings. We're the only ones who don't wake up on a Friday worried about the sa'a. We wake up and mashallah, we have all these hopes and aspirations of the day ahead of us. We don't think and remember the sa'a. But the animals do. The Prophet says there isn't an animal on the face of the earth except that once Friday begins, the, all the animals cry out of fear of the hour except human beings. We don't even remember that the hour could be established on a Friday, let alone be fearful of it. And then the Prophet also ends this hadith by saying, and on the day of Friday there is an hour. No believing person prays to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during this hour, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants him whatever he wants or asks for. So this is what the Prophet ﷺ said about a, the Friday, every Friday, not just one Friday in the year, but every Friday. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered the Muslims to gather together for Salat al-Jumu'ah, which replaces Salat al-Dhuhr on a Friday. We gather together, and the Prophet ﷺ made it wajib upon the Muslims to listen to the khutbah. So we gather together, we meet each other, we strengthen this bond of brotherhood, as we say. And we also listen to our Imam and our Khatib in during the khutbah in which he addresses some issue of importance in our lives as Muslims. So that over time, slowly we begin to learn more and more about this deen of Islam and how we should live it as Muslims and what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. So let us brothers and sisters strive to make use of Fridays, not just whenever it's a holiday, but strive at the very least to be able to come to Salat al-Jumu'ah on a Friday. And I know there are people, brothers and sisters, who may not be able to do so. And Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. He will only hold us accountable for the things we have control over. But we should make effort to do so. I've heard stories of people who, who plead with their employers the, the, the freedom of religion in, the, in this country and their right to take time off to go to Jumu'ah and yet they never end up at the masjid. They do not end up at the masjid. And as Muslims, it is an integral part of our character that we be honest and we be truthful and we be sincere. So if we say we're going to the masjid, let us end up at the masjid. Because it's the same concept we preach to our kids. If you say you're going to point A, make sure you go to point A. Don't end up at point D, which is quite often the case with young people. They tell you they're going to point A, but they don't tell you experience they're going to point B, C, and D as well. And quite often the parents find out that they ended up somewhere else. But we should, so we should practice what we preach to our own children and our young people.
So if we leave and we look for time off to go to the masjid, let's go to the masjid for Salat al-Jumu'ah. Allah will bless us. Allah will bless us. We may not see the blessings in the way we want to see it, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will certainly bless us. Because remember the promise of the Prophet ﷺ, during Friday there is an hour. No believing person prays during this time and makes dua, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants him whatever he asks for. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. Inshallah, in our subsequent sessions, we will talk more about, in particular, the Christian uh, celebration of Good Friday and then Easter Monday, as they say, and look at the life of Prophet Isa alayhi salam and his mother Maryam alayhi salam uh, from the Quranic perspective. perspective. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us and may He open up our hearts and minds so that not only would we understand His message, but we would be inspired to also live by that message. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.